mystery of the Albrooksburg Castle. By the end of the 17th century, alchemy was no longer so attractive as in past times, popular were the natural sciences and of course medicine. The inquisitive and capable young man, Johann Friedrich Botger, decided to take it up. In 1698, when he was 16 years old, he enrolled in a teaching to the famous Berlin pharmacist Zorn. However, in less than a couple of years, Zorn discovered that the student was reading books enthusiastically, but not in medicine and pharmaceuticals, but in alchemy and the occult sciences. The venerable pharmacist came to holy horror, alchemy was already considered an ungodly act, it will lead you to collapse, he screamed, but the young student only shrugged his shoulders, and what will I get if I'm rubbing powders and cooking potions all my life? A penny salary, isn't it a collapse of all dreams? And if I do alchemy, I will be able to discover the philosopher's stone, with the help of which I will begin to make gold, and get rich instantly. Alas, it soon became clear that Joan was not able to quickly learn how to get gold, but apparently, vanity was stronger than him, and once, when Zorn once again reproached him for negligence, Botka decided to surprise the teacher. In fact, I have long known the secret of how to make gold from lead. I learned it from a traveling Greek scholar. He traveled to our places and carelessly fell into the river. And I pulled him out. Therefore, he revealed to me a secret. There is a special liquid that needs to be added during the smelting, and lead will turn into gold. The pharmacist scratched his chin in surprise. And why can't you get some gold? I haven't yet been able to make this liquid according to a Greek recipe, Johan growled, but as soon as this happens, I will become rich. It turned out otherwise, whether someone overheard their conversation, or Zorn himself blabbed out, but rumors about the apprentice of pharmacist who could make gold from a lead, flew around Berlin and reached the king of Prussia, Frederick I. Johan learned about it and managed to run away. So. When the soldiers came to the pharmacy to take away the young alchemist, on the orders of the king, he ran away. Botka decided to wait out in Saxony, however, the Saxon elector Frederick Augustus I, who was at that time also the Polish king under the name Augustus II, needed money no less than Friedrich of Prussia. So in Dresden, the alchemist was captured and placed in a house in whose basement a secret laboratory was equipped. The elector was eager for gold too. Johann began to work. Mixed different components, merged and spilled, cooked and cooled. A thousand times he cursed his boasting. Why did he boast before Zorn what he cannot do? In the end, desperate Botka decided to flee again. But he was caught, captured and returned. Here are just settled no longer in a well-maintained house but in the basement of the old collapsing castle of Albrechtsburg, which is near the town of Mason. Johann was locked up in an underground laboratory, and he had choice, either to create gold or to die in a dark basement, and again the alchemist melted metals in the furnaces at random, mixed various combinations, all in vain. It only got worse, because the clay crucibles in which metals were boiling constantly burst, unable to withstand the heat of the furnace to continue the work. It was necessary to make the crucibles himself. Therefore, Botka requested different grades of clay. Then one day he brought red clay from the vicinity of the town of Ockrill, which was not far from Mason. Johann was delighted. The crucible of this clay can withstand a fantastic temperature, more than 1800 degrees. He told Count Enfried von Chernhaus, who was observing his work. The Count has long been talking to an alchemist prisoner, at first, against his will. The Elector of Saxony ordered him to supervise the work of Botka. But Chernhaus was an educated and curious person. He carried on natural sciences and conducted geological surveys in Saxony. His dream was to solve the mystery of the Chinese porcelain. Nowhere in the world, except for a distant eastern country, were not able to do aware of this white miracle porcelain solid, thin and transparent, was worth its weight in gold. Once the elector had to exchange a pair of porcelain cups for a whole platoon of well-trained soldiers. Rising quickly, Chernhaus grabbed a red crucible and weighed it on his arm, light, hard. He tapped it with a fingernail, the sound was very ringing. 
Yes, this discovery is more precious than gold, he exclaimed happily. A little more, and we will understand what the Chinese make porcelain from. The discovery stunned the elector. He will become richer than all in Europe, selling porcelain. It should have forced the prisoner of the castle of Olbrichtsburg to work faster and harder. And so, Botka was transferred from the basement to the living rooms. He was even allowed to go to the city, however, the real creation of porcelain was still far away, because the clay was red, it lacked fusibility, when fired, it did not turn into a glassy mass, but rather into a dry stone. Clay should be mixed with something, but with what? Botka fell into despair, in addition, he was waiting for a new blow, in 1708, his patron died, Earl Chernhaus, who stood up for him before the elector, and the ruler began to violently demand the completion of work, Botka did not sleep at night, but could not think of anything, the solution was suggested by life itself, one day Johann went to the hairdresser, and there the master sprinkled his wig with white powder. Botka touched the powder, it molded into balls, like clay. What is this? he asked. The hairdresser, trembling, confessed. He saved on the client, he sprinkled his hair with not expensive French powder, but the so-called Schne ground. It turned out that ten years ago the merchant Schne, noticed that the whole district was covered with white dust, similar to flour. It turned out that the wind spreads around the smallest particles of white clay. The merchant quickly realized, that he could get rich if he began to sell this flour instead of expensive French powder. Botka did not continue to listen to the hairdresser, throwing in search of white clay. It was suitable for work, for melting, he added quartz and alabaster. By the end of 1708, the experiments were completed, and in March 1709, the 27-year-old, Johann Friedrich Botka appeared before a scientific commission, which the Elector of Saxony ordered to evaluate the work of the court alchemist, or rather, the first creator of porcelain in Europe. Botka presented six cups, white, the lightest, almost transparent. They were durable, resistant to boiling water, and made a pleasant chime if you tapped them with a wooden stick. In addition, their surface was firm and smooth, even a sharp knife did not scratch it. In Mason it was decided to start production, the main laboratory was still located in the castle of Olbrichtsberg. In 1710, porcelain products were shown at the Leipzig Spring Fair, where shoppers from all over Europe, gathered. Their mason porcelain created a furor. Of course, it was unusually expensive, and only the richest people could buy porcelain dishes, vases and figurines. Only monarchs could afford the possession of the whole service. As a result, rivers of gold flowed into the treasury of Friedrich August. The very same creator of this gold just fell off his feet, installed new furnaces, hired and trained workers. Production was declared the strictest secret. All applicants to work at the porcelain manufactory made an oath to keep its secrets. For the disclosure relied death penalty. Other measures were taken. Those who prepared the porcelain mass did not know how the kilns work. Those who were firing, had no idea about the raw materials. Well, the three main components of porcelain secrets, white clay, kaolin, additives for melting and firing temperature, knew only three people, Botka himself and his two deputies. The father of European porcelain finally got what he wanted, wealth and recognition. The elector generously paid him, so that Botka lived in luxury and prosperity, but, he was always watched, and if he traveled to Dresden, the surveillance increased. The elector did not trust anyone. Worse, he saw spies and scammers everywhere. He even suggested that Botka wants to sell the secret of making porcelain to his former sovereign, the King of Prussia. It was an obvious absurdity, but poor Botka was imprisoned for several weeks. However, in his absence, production at the Mason manufactory had stalled, so Johann had to be released. He led the manufacture until his death which followed March 13, 1719. The self-taught inventor was only 37 years old. Well, as you know, at this age geniuses leave the earth. Already six years later, in 1725, his personal stamp, 
Blue crossed swords began to be applied to mason porcelain. Under this brand he is known in our time. And by the way, it was the only porcelain manufactory in Europe, until in 1756 in France. The active Marcus Pompadour created the Sevres Royal Porcelain Manufactory. The Museum of Porcelain is now located in the Albrechtsberg Castle.